Hi everyone, this is Maverick Pa, the Chemistry Guru. Now in this video, we want to discuss the suggested solution for 2021 A-Levels H2 Chemistry, Paper 1, Question 6. So let's take a look at this exercise. The table identifies the shape and polarity of four molecules, which row is correct. Now we are given four molecules here. What we want to determine basically is the shape of the molecule and the polarity of the molecule. So the topic tested in this question, of course, is under chem bonding. And in particular, what we have to be able to do is we have to determine the shape of the molecule. And from the shape of the molecule, we have to determine whether overall this molecule is polar or non-polar. So given these four different molecules, we actually have to do quite a fair bit of work to first thing determine the total number of bond pair and low pair around the central atom. And then from there, I can determine the molecular shape. Then based on the molecular shape, we have to decide whether the bonds are polar. And we have to consider the dipole moment, see whether the dipole moment cancels out. And finally, we can determine whether the molecule is polar or non-polar. So it is actually pretty elaborate. And if we are not familiar with the cross diagram, shapes of molecules, then this question can give us quite a bit of an issue. It can be a little bit tedious. Now, the molecules given in this exercise is still pretty manageable. They are very simple molecules to draw. So let us take a look at each one of them. Now, first one is involving boron trichloride. Now, boron trichloride, it is involving BCl3. Let us talk about the dot and cross diagram if we're not familiar with that. Let us practice drawing dot cross diagram. So involving boron, I know that this is in group 13. B will be the central atom. So I'll put B at the center and chlorine will be at the side. And since boron is in group 13, it has three valence electrons. So what you will do is you share one electron with chlorine because chlorine is in group 17, has seven valence electrons, need one electron to be octet. So what chlorine will do is you share one electron with boron, boron share one back and this would be basically a single bond. And I will draw the lone pairs for chlorine. This would be a single bond. Same goes for the other boron-chlorine bond. This is a single bond. And Cl will be octet. This is another single bond. And then Cl will also be octet. Now involving boron, boron actually has only six electrons. And therefore it is electron deficient. But this is the best way for us to draw B, Cl3, chlorine will be octet, but boron will be electron deficient. So the total number of electron pair around boron, the central atom, is actually three bond pair, three bond pair plus no lone pair. Now three bond pair, no lone pair, this is actually our basic shape. Shape is trigonal planar. So with respect to the shape, the shape is correct, trigonal planar. No issue with that. And let us also put in the shape for our BCl3. So boron is at the center. I have your BCl bond, trigonal planar. And now what we have to consider is we have to consider whether the molecule is polar or non-polar. Now, BCl bond is polar because there is a big difference in electronegativity. Chlorine basically is a partial minus charge. B is a delta positive charge. And for each of this BCl bond, which is polar, there is a dipole moment pointing towards the direction of your Cl. So there's a dipole moment which is pointing in this direction along the BCl bond, along your BCl bond, and also along your BCl bond. Now, these three dipole moments should cancel out each other exactly because trigonal planar, this is a basic shape. And this means that BCl3 is highly symmetrical. All these dipole moments will cancel out each other. And the net dipole moment for BCl3 will be equals to zero. And this means that my BCl3 should be non-polar. So the shape is correct, trigonal planar, but the polarity actually is not correct. BCl3, since it has a basic shape and it is highly symmetrical, the dipole moments should cancel out. This shouldn't be polar, it should be a non-polar molecule. And because of that, option A is not correct. So you notice, just by considering BCl3, if again we're not familiar with the shapes of molecules and considering the dipole moment, then we have to do this four times for option A, B, C, D. This question can be a bit tedious if we're not familiar with the cross diagram and shapes of molecules. And let us move on to B. B involving 
nitrogen trichloride. Now NCl3, we again try to draw the dot cross diagram. I know that nitrogen is at the center and chlorine is at the side. And usually how I'll draw this is chlorine, which is the surrounding atom, will try to form a certain number of bonds with the central atom to make itself stable. So chlorine is in group 17, need one more electron to be stable. So it will share one electron with nitrogen, nitrogen will share one bank. So chlorine will be stable, chlorine will be octet. So same goes for the other NCL bond, this will be a single bond. Same goes for the other NCL bond, this is a single bond. Then we have to remember nitrogen is in group 15, five valence electrons. It is already using up three electrons for bonding. So I have two electrons spare. This is a lone pair. I have one lone pair on nitrogen. So basically the total number of electron pair around the central atom nitrogen is three bond pair plus one lone pair. So this is three bond pair plus one lone pair. Now three bond pair plus one lone pair, the basic shape is tetrahedral. So if I use the ball and stick model, the basic shape, total number of electron pairs is four electron pair. Basic shape is tetrahedral. So tetrahedral, this is for four bond pair, no lone pair. What I have to do next is I have to replace one of the bond pair with a lone pair. Since this is three bond pair plus one lone pair, so I'll take away this bond pair, convert it to a lone pair. So this is the shape for nitrogen trichloride. And you notice what I have is I have a triangle base. I have a triangle base here. And this is my trigonal pyramidal. So shape-wise, again, is no problem. The name of the shape, trigonal pyramidal is correct. Trigonal pyramidal is the correct name for the shape. And the next thing I have to do is I have to consider whether is it non-polar. Now involving NCl3, if I draw this guy out, nitrogen, chlorine, Cl, Cl, and I have a lone pair, you notice in terms of the shape, since this is pyramidal, and NCl bond is actually also polar, nitrogen is more electronegative than chlorine, so N will be the partial minus charge. Chlorine is the partial positive charge in this case, because nitrogen is more electronegative than chlorine. So there will be a dipole moment pointing towards your nitrogen. So if I put in the dipole moment, one arrow pointing up towards your nitrogen, another arrow pointing up, another arrow which represents the dipole moment pointing up towards nitrogen. So you notice if we try to visualize the net dipole moment, there's a general arrow pointing up that is not cancelled by any downward arrow. So this means that your NCL3 is polar. And again, it is not consistent with what the option is saying. The option is saying that this guy is non-polar. But in fact, it has a net double moment. NCL3 should be polar. So because of that, again, option B, it is not correct. Next, let us consider C. C, sulfur dioxide. Sulfur dioxide, same thing. Let us try to draw the dot cross diagram. Sulfur is at the center. Oxygen is at the side. And if I consider oxygen, oxygen actually needs two electrons to be octane because it is group 16. So what oxygen will try to do is you share two electrons with sulfur. Sulfur will share two bank. So this will be a double bond. Sulfur double bond oxygen. The other oxygen is also the same. Oxygen share two electrons with sulfur. Sulfur share two bank. This will also be a double bond. Put in the rest of the electrons for oxygen. So basically this will be a double bond between sulfur and oxygen, between sulfur and oxygen. Now remember sulfur is in group 16. So altogether, you will have six valence electrons. We already draw four dots here that represents four electrons involving sulfur. So therefore, there are two more electrons that we have to account for. I have a lone pair. Now, if I consider the total number of electrons around sulfur, actually sulfur has altogether 10 electrons, which is okay, right? Because sulfur, it is in period three and it can make use of its 3D subshell to form bonds. So it can have more than eight electrons around its valence shell. And therefore, sulfur can expand octet in this case. So what we can do next is we can consider the shape. Of course, once you look at the total number of electron pair around sulfur, now remember double bond is counted as one bond pair. This guy, the shape is two bond pair plus one lone pair. So two bond pair plus one lone pair. Basic shape is trigonal planar. Trigonal planar actually is something like this. All right, so this is for the basic shape involving three bond pair, no lone pair. Now, what I have to do next is I have to convert one of the bond pair to a lone pair. So I take away one of the bond pair, convert this to a lone pair. Shape with respect to your SO2 is actually bent. You notice the shape with respect to SO2 is bent. So straight away, we know that 
the shape linear is not correct. If we think that linear is the answer, then most likely it is because we left out the lone pair, we forget that sulfur actually has a lone pair. But with the lone pair there, two bond pair plus one lone pair, it is not possible for sulfur dioxide to have linear shape. And once this shape is wrong, then there isn't a need for us to consider the polarity of our sulfur dioxide. So C, it is not true. And finally, let us consider D. We actually know that D has to be the answer because A is wrong, B is wrong, C is also wrong. So finally, we are at D. Now try chloromethane. Try chloromethane is actually quite easy. I don't think we need to draw the dot and cross diagram involving this because carbon can form four bonds. And I have three chlorine, I have one hydrogen. So try chloromethane. In terms of the arrangement, it will just be a carbon bonded to a hydrogen, then bonded to three chlorine. So very, very simple. This will be my tri chloromethane. Of course, we have to take into consideration the shape with respect to my carbon. Carbon has four bond pair, four bond pair, no lone pair. If it is four bond pair, no lone pair, then this is a basic shape. So basic shape will be tetrahedral. So the shape is correct. Involving my trichloromethane, the shape with respect to carbon, it is tetrahedral. So I put in the shape here. I have a hydrogen on top. Cl group pointing downwards to form your tetrahedral configuration. So now the next thing we have to determine is whether this trichloromethane is polar or non-polar. Now, only CCl bond is polar. CH bond, the difference in electronegativity is very small. So we treat CH bond to be non-polar. CCl bond is polar because chlorine is more electronegative than carbon. So Cl is a partial minus. And carbon, it is a delta positive charge. So therefore, there will be this net dipole moment pointing downwards in the direction of your chlorine. And you notice there's an overall net dipole moment pointing down and there's no arrow pointing out to cancel this. This means that your trichloromethane is polar. So the answer to this question will be option D. All right, so that was the discussion involving this exercise. If you have learned something useful from this video, please give me the thumbs up, like this video, and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more weekly video lessons. That's all for now. I'll see you next week.